All right, class, today we're starting our talk about the Constitution. And so we kind of got to begin with our original Constitution. That's going to be the Articles of Confederation. So we're using our Constitution notes number one here. And as we look into the Constitution, it's kind of, we need to do a little quick review from our last thing, which was the Revolutionary War. So, you know, on July 4th of 76, we declare independence, which of course leads to the Revolutionary War. And which, you know, we win our, the Revolutionary War, so we're in an independent country. But through that whole process, and certainly after you win your independence, you know, you've overthrown the British government. Well, now you need your own government in order to rule. So we're going to be talking about the Constitution now. The Constitution's got a couple of definitions. When we see the Constitution like this with the lowercase c, we know it's just a regular plain old noun. This just means in general it's the rule book for any government. So governments have constitutions. A lot of governments don't buy the writers down. Our founding fathers wanted to make sure our constitution's written down. So if we look at number one of our notes, it was, you know, we needed a, a government. Okay, so we need a government once we win our independence and once we declare our independence. And for number two of our notes, our definition is that it is the rule book for the government. So when we see constitution later in the scene, though, whenever it's a capital C, we're talking about the proper noun. So that's the old... 1787 government that governs over the entire United States. Okay, One of the cool things about our nation is that we have what's called the rule of law. And so, you know, even Mr. Shepard, our principal or a police officer, or even the president of the United States, they still have to follow the same rules of the government that the rest of us have to follow. Nothing can ever go against the Constitution. The law, the Constitution is higher and more powerful than anybody else. So let's look at our first constitution. Number three is the Articles of Confederation. And this is written pretty much right after the Declaration of Independence. That same group of guys got together and started writing this. And it set up the rules for our first government. It sets up a very weak national government by design, which means if the, look at number four of our notes, if the national government's not powerful, all the power was instead with the states. And it's kind of by design. So this is the government that's actually around that wins us the Revolutionary War. So very weak national government. You don't want something like Parliament or like a strong king-like figure in charge. So instead, you avoid that. Just give all the power to the different states and have a national government that's there trying to hold everything together. And it's effective enough during a time of war because, they, you know, common enemy, they all band together. But once that goes away, we really see a lot of problems happen. You know, we often don't think about the name of our country, the United States of America. When you think about that, you know, America, of course, in that name is referring to the continent that we're on. United, you know, we're all together. When we think of states as a small part of a country, but around the world, states usually means, you know, you hear about the Israeli state or the Chinese state media. They mean the state is its own country. So really, in the early kind of time period, all of our states are acting like their own independent countries which will create numerous, numerous problems, which we're going to see. So like I said, very weak national government. And they still have a lot of problems. So number five, again, they're acting like independent countries, if you guys missed that. So all 13 of these states are all acting like a number five, an independent country. So just look at our weak national government. Uh, the thing that caused them probably to be weakest, the biggest is that in order to raise money, the Congress, the National Congress could only ask for money. They could ask the states for money. As look at number six, they couldn't tax. They don't have any power to tax. You don't have any power to tax. It means you don't have any money because typically the states are going to say, no, we'd rather not give you money. We'd rather keep that money here. So we have a very weak army and a pretty much non-existent Navy. So this creates an even bigger problem. We're in all this debt from the war. You know, the French had helped us out, but they didn't just help us out for the day. They expect to be paid back. And $40 million worth of war debt you can't pay back, it's a big time problem. So they're a very, very bad idea to have to pay back its war debt as we get number seven. Or they decide to print off a bunch of money. And sometimes you'll hear people say, nowadays, well, our government's in all this debt. Why don't we just print off a bunch of money and pay it? Well, the reason we don't do that is we're smarter than the Continental Congress. Because if you do that, you cause, on number eight, inflation. Okay, And inflation, if it gets too bad, is very, very bad. This is where your money becomes less valuable over time. So if you think about it, man, if I saved a bunch of money up in the bank, then I, that money basically became almost, you know, lost half its value or whatever in a year. It's a big, big problem. People don't want to invest as much money anymore. 
businesses stop buying and selling stuff with currency. They want hard gold. Well, that's a whole other set of problems because then people are buying less stuff. It really causes your economy to dip. Another thing that we got to look at with this weak national government, we have a lot of conflict between the states. So number nine, all the stuff you see, okay, in each of the states, they're acting like their own country. So each state's competing to be more powerful. So they all want more money out of each state. So they're charging a tax on imports from other states. So if you ship something from Pennsylvania into Virginia, you'd pay a tax on that because it's from a different state, even though it's still in the United States. There's more that might break up between the states over competing land claims because Virginia claims that, you know, they have all this land west of the Appalachian Mountains and North Carolina's coming. They have the same land and Pennsylvania wants the same land. New York even is coming the same land. Because now that Britain's gone, all that land's now there for the taking. So all these states want it. And if you think about it, in Europe, you know, when states are having conflict, Germany, France, whoever, a lot of times war breaks out. So that could happen. Uh, other countries don't want to do business with the United States because to do business with the United States, you'd have to get a different deal made with each state as opposed to just one. So that's a difficult. Some states are starting to make their own currency. That's a bit, another big problem. So we're being disrespected by a lot of other countries. As we look at number 10, some things you can put down for the two ways of being disrespected. Britain was supposed to give up all this land in places like where Ohio and Michigan are, what we could now call the Northwest Territory back then. Well, they didn't get rid of their forts because they realized, well, America, they don't have an army. They can't make us. So let's just keep it and keep making money, even though, yeah, it's against the law. They can't do anything about it. Spain, meanwhile, closed the Mississippi River because, again, we don't have a navy and army. They're like, well, why wouldn't we? It's, you know, they can't do anything about it. So things are really, really going bad. The economy goes into a depression. It's just an absolute disaster. So any logical person can say, well, gee, let's change the Articles of Confederation. The problem is, if we look at number 11 in your notes, to make a change to the Articles of Confederation, you have to get all 13 states to agree to it. So if one state doesn't want to change something, then it doesn't get changed. And this, of course, will lead to big time problems. And we'll get some problems with the voting, the way voting's broken out in our next section.